welcome to Phoebe's Fishy Facts. For those of us who are lucky enough to have experienced love and unlucky enough to have seen it go, we're often treated with the phrase, there are plenty more fish in the sea. But who are we kidding? As we become older and march into the future, the availability of fish is dwindling as our appetite for it only grows. So today, we're going to first get our feet wet with a discussion about how and why our diet for fish continues to grow. Then, we'll dive deep into the ocean and see how that diet profile actually looks like and how it continues to harm not only the fish, but the world. And finally, We'll come up for air by analyzing the rise of fish farming or aquaculture and understand why it is so vital that we select the correct fish to breed and market. Now, let's go to our correspondent in the kitchen for our first segment. Thanks, Phoebe. Now, to bastardize one of my favorite sayings from Finding Nemo, fish are food, not friends. And it's true. The world has nearly doubled its fish intake per person capita in the last 50 years. We went from eating 20 pounds of fish a year in the 1960s to 36 pounds as of 2005. And to exemplify that new global state of mind, we're going to be cooking a classic Chinese dish that my mom taught me when she realized that she didn't want me to starve. Now at restaurants, this dish is usually done with sea bass, but today, for reasons I'll go into later, we're going to be using tilapia. Other simple ingredients that you're going to need are tofu, green onion, soy sauce, and hot oil. The first thing we do is super easy. Get your defrosted tilapia. Then on a raised platform with water underneath, you want to steam that fish on high heat just for around 8 minutes or until the fish turns white. If it's fresh from the market, you can add some ginger just to get rid of that fishy smell. Then, all you need to do is slice your green onion into strips and your tofu into blocks. Now, why exactly did we shift and veer our diet into fish so extremely? Two reasons, government influence and World War II. Due to the digitization of warfare against the Axis powers, we perfected technology like sonar, radar, lightweight polymer, and spotter planes. And after World War II, we turned that towards fish. From there, as Berkeley PhD candidate Jeff Martins explains, some capital costs for expensive equipment form pressures to maximize their usage, leading to overfishing. So because more fish was available, we resorted to a more fishy diet. And because we resorted to that diet, there was more market demand. And so that cycle continues and continues. Then on top of that, to really drive the point home, the government decided that we would subsidize billions of dollars into fishing. Subsidies make wild fish unreasonably cheap. In fact, currently 80 to 90 metric tons of fish are taken out every single year. That is the equivalent of the human weight of China, our most populated country in the world. And all of that comes out of the ocean, yearly. Interestingly enough, according to Paul Greensburg, best-selling author and a researcher who has looked into fish for the last 15 years, our diet profile actually boils down to just four different types of seafood. Now, while I let this fish continue to steam, we're going to turn it back to the main room to talk about that. Thanks, Phoebe. Now, we tend to go with our appetites rather than our minds when we choose what we want to consume. Regardless of where you cook or dine, you may have noticed that our market loves four types of creatures, and that's shrimp, tuna, salmon, and cod. When you look at the environmental hazards that they create, it is obvious that they are not logical choices at all. For example, shrimp drawling to drag a net the size of a football field onto the bottom of the ocean floor. That not only kills coral reefs, but destroys habitats where more fish can live. Then when you raise the net to catch just one pound of shrimp, five, 10, maybe 15 pounds of fish are often caught as bycatch, meaning that they're simply dumped back into the ocean dead. Or in some cases, they're grinded up to feed the chickens. As for the other fish, they're either warm-blooded or crazy fast, making for horrible conditions under farm fishing, or they're not low enough on the food chain, and yet we consume a lot of it, and thus many other fish are required to feed them. Now, we may think that this appetite was formed based on our own opinions, but actually no. Ever heard of the Chilean sea bass? It is a popular, expensive delicacy dish that actually didn't gain any attention really until it was rebranded in 1970s. The real fish that goes into that sexy name is actually the Patagonian toothfish, which is ugly, sounds ugly, and it's a codfish that hides away in deep waters and actually takes 10 years in order to find a mate and create another being. It lived unbothered for a long time until we decided that it was a trendy food item, which goes to show that marketing actually goes a long way into deciding what our appetite and what tastes good to us is. Now to really prove that, we're going to go back to Phoebe in the kitchen for a final word. Hello again. 
Our fish is almost ready now, so we're going to, on the side, heat a few tablespoons of hot oil that's so hot that it needs to sizzle the moment any drop of water touches it. Awesome, now that we have both the oil and the fish ready, it's all completely white, no longer translucent, add that green onion that you had chopped off, and then very carefully get that oil that we got sizzling so hot, and you want to just pour it on. And for your final touch, we're just going to add some soy sauce on the side, a little bit on the tofu, and that's your finished dish. When we in the West eat fish, we love an oily fish profile, those high in omega-3 and DH3 levels. So this classic Eastern dish would totally fit the bill. However, it's not enough to just eat what is based on popularity or marketed as a delicacy. Our tastes are refined by the decisions that we make every single day. As our oceans become depleted at an alarmingly fast rate, we are shifting to farm fishing at an even more impressive rate. According to the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, by 2030, we will farm as many fish as we catch. And since farming fish requires an active choice as to which fish we want to breed, it is crucial that we do this logically. And we can push fish farmers to select their fish based off of our purchasing power decisions. Tilapia, which I used as a substitute here instead of sea bass, is also an oily fish profile. But it is a low impact vegetarian fish that feeds off of soybeans and other grains. It's also one of the easiest to farm. Crazy sustainable as it cycles from egg to adult in just nine months. And as you can see here, it's super tasty as well. Thanks for watching Phoebe's Fishy Facts. And I hope that you guys use your purchasing power to make some informed decisions for good. This is me signing off. <laughs> so that it mixes well with the oil, a little bit on the tofu, and that's your finished dish.